Today I'm going to talk about the concept of a body set weight and how controlling it can help you lose weight. It's coming right up. The body set weight acts like a sort of thermostat for body fat percentage. Let's think about the concept of how a thermostat works. What you do is you set the thermostat for room temperature, for example. And if it's too cold outside, the room gets cold and the thermostat will activate the heater to bring the temperature up to the proper setting. If it's too hot, then it's going to turn on the air conditioning and bring the temperature down. In either case, what you do is you try to keep this comfort level. And this applies also in physiology. It's the concept of homeostasis. That is, when things get too hot on your body, you're going to cool it down and you do that to sweat. When it gets too cold, you're going to shiver and bring the temperature up. It turns out that homeostasis also applies to the concept of body fat. And the reason is that the body fat percentage is a hugely important factor in survival for wild animals. If you think about it, an animal that has too little body fat compared to a normal animal is not going to survive because body fat is a store of energy or calories. So if it doesn't have enough body fat, there's only a limited time that it can survive before it dies of starvation. And if it has too much body fat, well, it's going to be slower. So it's going to find it harder to get food. And at the same time, it's going to be more likely to get eaten. So therefore in the wild, the body fat percentage is a very tightly controlled measure. And this applies to humans as well. If you look at the studies over the last 50 years, we've well known that the body fat is not controlled just by the, the calories you take in and versus the calories you take out. There's a body fat thermostat, which is sometimes also called the body set weight. This is a study uh, done in the 90s, so almost 30 years ago, which clearly demonstrates this. What they did is they took a group of people experimentally, gave them a shake, and fed them so much that they gained 10% in body weight. Then they looked at how much energy that these people were using in a day. When they gained weight, their bodies increased their caloric expenditure by almost 500 calories a day, which means that they were trying to burn off all of the excess calories that they were taking in. So as you, we were trying experimentally to fatten these people up, their bodies were actually trying to push them back towards normal, which is homeostasis. That's just like the thermostat. As we took those people and returned them back to their normal body weight, their energy expenditure also went back to normal. And as we went and made them lose 10% of body weight, their bodies used less energy by three to 400 calories per day less. This is the situation that we find ourselves in most of the time. When we're trying to lose weight, our bodies therefore stop using so much energy. So if you're burning fewer calories at the same time you're eating fewer calories, your weight loss is going to slow down or completely stop. So we see that there is clearly evidence of this body set weight. And what's important, therefore, is not the calories in, calories out, but how are we going to control this body fat thermostat? Our bodies are almost entirely controlled by hormones. And our body fat thermostat is no different. It's also controlled by hormones. If we turn up certain hormones, then our body fat percentage will also go up. And if we turn it down, it will go down. We see this experimentally all the time. In this DCCT trial, they treated type 1 diabetics with either a lower dose of insulin or a relatively higher dose of insulin to control their blood glucose. 
when they took more of the insulin, their sugars were better controlled. But what happened to body weight? Well, over the ensuing nine years, we see that those taking a very high dose of insulin had almost 30% incidence of significant weight gain compared to those taking less insulin. So clearly, those people, as we dialed up their insulin, gained more weight. And it wasn't that trial. Uh, other trials of insulin have shown the same thing. Newer forms of insulin have shown that higher doses tend to cause weight gain. And drugs, such as the sulfonylurea drugs, which stimulate us to make more insulin, are clearly associated with weight gain. When you take a disease such as type 1 diabetes, which is untreated, we see very low levels of insulin. And in fact, their body weight keeps going down and down and down, no matter what they eat. This is an example of untreated type 1 diabetes. And on the right, as they get treated, their weight comes back to normal. So it's very clear, as you turn up the insulin, body weight goes up. As you turn down the insulin, it goes down. Let's go back to our example of the thermostat. If we have a thermostat which is set at room temperature, and now we want to raise the temperature, we might do something like bring in a little heater to bring more heat in. Because we might say, well, the room temperature is simply heat in minus heat out. As we bring in more heat with a heater, well, the room temperature should go up. But it doesn't, because the thermostat as it's fixed, then turns on the air conditioning to counteract that. The body acts in the same way. If we say that body fat equals calories in minus calories out, we might think, oh, hey, all we have to do is eat fewer calories. But if the body fat percentage is fixed at that body set weight, then you will not lose weight because your body will simply burn fewer calories. And that's what happens in all the experiments we've done for the last 100 years. There's two possible ways we can look at it. We can say that positive caloric balance causes obesity. Just like that little heater can raise the temperature in the room. But if that's the case, then all we have to do is find out why we're eating too many calories, and people will often say, hey, that's just low willpower. Since the low willpower is the root cause, the solution is to just eat less. And that's been what most people have tried for the last 50 years, which has been spectacularly unsuccessful. But if we look at this from a different standpoint, let's say that obesity is an increased body set weight. As that body fat thermostat is set at too high a level, it's going to naturally put ourselves into a positive caloric balance as we try to get up to that body fat percentage. But then we can ask the question, why is our body set weight too high? And we can say, well, it's the hormones, particularly the insulin. If insulin is therefore too high, then all we have to do is figure out how we're going to lower that insulin. And there's two strategies to do that. You can watch what you eat. Some foods are more fattening than others because some foods stimulate more insulin than others. Therefore, we should focus on those foods that don't stimulate it so much. Eating unprocessed foods, lower in carbohydrates, lots of fiber. And the other way is managing how often you eat. Because every time you eat, insulin goes up. If you eat 10 times a day, your insulin is going to go up higher than if you eat once a day. So don't eat all the time. And it turns out when people finally start to understand that this is what causes body fat to go up over the long term, then you can implement strategies that are more successful than simply counting your calories, watching your diet, that is what you eat, and also how often you eat. And that's how to be successful at losing weight. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something. If you did, why don't you share it with a friend? You might help them too. 
And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button uh, just underneath there so that other people can find this video, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much.